payoff. And E3 has another function, but it's relating to the demand process, but this is also going down with the idea that the ideal conditions will be when it becomes asymptotically small. Of course, a different form function, different schemes of acceptance might be worked out. It's not clear. Ultimately, what would be the better? Now I have some more, some more graphics to show. Should I escape here? Yes. And yes. Now this doesn't come out on the regular PowerPoint so well. By the way, I have also the paper is printed. My paper recently appeared after. It was really more than 10 years of work. It was published in a journal called the International Game Theory Review, and they put it in a special issue. And that issue was, that was nominally in December of 2008, but it actually appeared in late spring of this year. And that uh, published for World Scientific. There's one thing about uh, the way that it's published, the published thing in the journal shows the graphics without color, but the data that had been sent into the journal had the graphics in color. However, the journal, was, it, how they operate so that on the email you can go to the journal and you can get a PDF of the whole paper, and in the PDF file, the graphics have regained their color. <laughs> Uh, it's I guess something about the printing uh, in the, the actual printed form, but, but they could provide it. They could provide it. Uh, now this is where I have a. This is. I, I, I'm not seeing the mouse. Here it is. Now this chart the. the the assistance, it was an NSF project, National Science Foundation, and the, ass the assistance were students at Princeton, which were supported for doing some work by that. This is the, the, the chart that best reveals the comparison between these model results, and these are approximate because the epsilon quantities have not been reduced in fact, to zero, but to small numbers. I'm not sure that it's very easily visible. Someone who doesn't have telescopic vision. But a quantity called B3 is varying. B3 represents the strength of players one and two. What they could do without cooperating with player three at all, they accept they just form a coalition. They either accept the other, and then uh, player three is out of it. If, if, if this could be calculated uh, up to the level of, uh, they could have seventy percent of the payoff. They could get seven tenths of one, and beyond that, I couldn't calculate it. Some problems appeared in the calculation, where the students were doing the multiple point. Well, this was. This was calculated by a student named Ludmer, Sebastian Ludmer. This was actually done in 2004. It's a very nice chart. But the interesting thing is you can contrast it with another idea, which is a popular, very popular and nice interpretation for cooperative games. It uh, gives results which are nice in many cases, and it can be calculated with some difficulty for large number, relatively large numbers of players, like maybe 15. And, but the effort goes up exponentially to get a complete calculation. It's the Shapley, the Shapley value. This was developed soon after the time when I was developing some ideas, my, my original ideas in game theory. Now, the Shapley value is this blue line. This is linear. 
The Schnappy value has a, an, a linear property that can be used in an axiomatic description of it. It's a, a, a question of whether cooperative, the values of cooperative gains should depend linearly on the data that is available, including characteristic function numbers. If it should depend linearly, well, then that's it. The Schnappy value is the only answer. Uh, this is our model. This starts out much slower. Now, the other thing is something also popular was developed in Israel called the nucleolus. Another thing that's called the modified nucleolus was developed by Peter Sudhalter, who is a German, and he's now in Denmark, southern Denmark, I think. He's a known game theorist. But it's not quite the same as the nucleolus. Well, what happens here is as long as B3 is not more than one-third, the nucleolus says that all players should get the same. There is no imbalance of the payoffs. This imbalance thing is how much player one plus player two get compared with twice of what player three gets. If they all get the same, then that's zero, like here. Or also like here. The nucleolus says that if the coalition strength of player one and player two together is only one-fourth, then they're not going to be able to use that. The players are all in partly the same situation. They could, they could just get a third each. But... The model works out, it turns out in this case to be between these, up to here, but then it's lower, it's lower than both of them. And ultimately, ultimately, well, in this, player one and player two are not getting much. Now, if this would keep going smoothly, it would turn up rather rapidly. And, but the game doesn't really work out like that because some of the behavior describing quantities can be moved to become zero, and they can't be allowed to become negative. So the, the equations would have to be changed to adjust for it in a proper way. But this, in this area of work, I'm still studying things. This has not been perfected particularly because uh, I was uh, a set of 10 games were studied experimentally, and uh, all but one of them had this problem of uh, difficulty from computing it from this model point of view. Now, a, a, a similar calculation was made I didn't see the mouse. Let me see where is it? This was this one was worked out by a different project assistant. Here the the asymmetry of the of the, the characteristic function connected with it. This, this game was uh, that uh, that uh, B Z was allowed to be different from zero. B three was zero, which meant player one and player two could not benefit at all. But there was a, 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 a standard amount which was called B Z, which would be both B one and B two. This would correspond to the player, player three and player one, that was B2, or player three and player two, which was called B1, and they could, they could benefit, but player three would be the key favorite player. He could benefit on a two-person reduction level with either player one or player two. So how much do any benefit? 
Well, this is how much this measures how player three would be in a better position than player one and player two. And this measures how that coalition data would be. So the model has that, well, again, the nucleolus says that there's, they all equally, should get equally, even though there's some coalition difference, except when this becomes one-third, when these become, and then they can get more. In fact, then it moves up very rapidly. And in the end, if the coalitions, if the coalitions reach a maximal level, uh, it, it coalition either player one and player three, or player two and player three can get all of the payoff, then it becomes a, a, a model type of game that's called the gloves game. It's analogous to a situation where there is uh, three people have uh, uh, gloves, but there's one right-handed glove and two left-handed gloves. And player three would be the one with the right-handed glove. Well, so if this goes up to one, the nucleolus differs from the Shapley value. The nucleolus says that player three then gets everything. But the Shapley value says something different, didn't he? He gets most all of it, but not all. And uh, but the model is giving a very s slight where it can be calculated. It doesn't go all the way to 0 0.7, but the the actual re computed results had that uh, player three was not getting so much of a benefit. So you, you get different indications. Now, I don't know how much time I should take, but some experiments were related to this, this calculation, the model calculation, and also the general idea that you could have cooperation formed by an acceptance process. This can be tested experimentally. I don't know if I should go on. But, some experiments were done actually in uh, Cologne in the laboratory of Axel Ockenfels, who's economics and game theory in in University of Cologne. And uh, the, ex uh, the experiments were designed. I, I was involved, Reinhard Zelton, who's very interested in experiments in these days, he shared with me in the trip to Stockholm in 1994. And the other one was John Harsanyi, who, who died a few years ago, who was older. He was the oldest. But I have this, I think it's, it's somewhere else. Let's see. Uh, this I have a, uh, this, uh, I was giving a lecture based on some calculations with the experimental idea. There was, there was an experiment where players were allowed to just accept other players and uh, the acceptance process and do it on a repeated basis. But the behavior, you could say, was not entirely, it wasn't clear that the behavior had exactly stabilized to a pattern. And uh, they did sometimes some simple-minded things. This is a gr group. That it, the, the, those are the cooperating things. That UPF is a, is a university in Barcelona. And I forget LEX. Because Zeltin is retired, but he's emeritus in, in Bonn. Oh, well, this is the first page. Now, these results, there's some, there's some studies and experiments. And in the experiments, if you add up, if you have a, a particular model of game that's designed as, 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 in the form that is designed for the experiment, players are 
using acceptance processes in order to cross